Hello, and welcome to Dark Hearts with Stacey Lee. You know the drill, hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and you can even join my Patreon. We have a big goal there, and I will talk about that at the end of the video. This is a new story about a recently caught serial killer that has not received much attention. I have some thoughts on why that is. The man we are talking about today is a perfect example of all that is wrong with our justice system. He has a rap sheet a mile long. He was known to be violent. He was known to be dangerous. He went to prison. He did a fraction of his sentence. He got out. He violated his parole. This is a man who is never going to follow the rules or the law. Chance after chance was given and time and again he proved that he does not deserve to be free in society. But as we so often see, it takes murder to finally stop criminals like this one. This is the story of serial killer Keith Gibson, who calls himself the Beast. I'm your host, Stacy Lee. Let's begin. Our story begins in Wilmington, Delaware on a hot summer night. It's around one in the morning on a Sunday and suddenly shots ring out. Someone calls 911 and the police and paramedics arrive at the Edgemore Gardens community on North Rodney Drive. Lying in the middle of the street is 32 year old Stanley Savon Jones. He has been shot one time and he is dead. The police begin an investigation and find that there are some witnesses willing to give information. The police bring those witnesses in and speak with neighbors in the area for about three weeks. And then someone comes forward and admits they know who the shooter is. This witness tells police that on the night Stanley was shot, there were three men together, James Hinson, Kelly Gibbs, and Keith Gibson. Then this witness tells the police that Keith was the shooter. So the police go to Keith's mother's house where he lives and they arrest him in September of 2008. They find the murder weapon, ballistic tests are run on the gun, and they have a match. So Keith Gibson goes to trial and is found guilty of the murder of Stanley Savon Jones. Well, that was a pretty short episode today. Like and subscribe. <laughs> no, my friends, we are far from finished. You would think being sent away for murdering someone in cold blood in the middle of the street would be life in prison. You would think. But no. Keith Gibson was given 20 years and only did 12 of those years for cold-blooded murder. Keith is paroled in June of 2020. He's released from prison into kind of a halfway house. They call it a community corrections facility. He's there for about three weeks when the people that run the halfway house call the parole board and say, come and get this guy. He's fighting with the other residents. He's breaking curfew. He doesn't follow the house rules. And so Keith's parole is revoked and he goes back to prison. The state of Delaware keeps Keith in prison for about six months until December of 2020. And then he's released a second time with 18 months probation. I find this whole thing shocking. 12 years for murder. I know of white collar criminals who have stolen trust money that have done more time than this. And I alluded to this in the beginning of the episode. Some of you get really mad when I talk about things like this, but I don't care because it's the truth. So if you wanna get mad about the truth, go be mad about the truth somewhere else because here we do truth. This is a black man killing another black man. Let's just tell it like it is. These criminals are not treated the same way killers who kill white people or mothers or kids are. That's just the truth. Every single life matters. People shouldn't get less time for killing a man of any race. True justice means that there is equality in that justice. So there, I've said it. If you're mad, go shake your fist at a cloud. <laughs> the second time Keith is released on probation, the terms of that probation were very strict. The parole officers were watching him closely. He was prohibited from leaving the state and he had a curfew of nine o'clock. He had to meet with his parole officer once a week and that parole officer was also tasked with popping in on Keith at his workplace and at his residence. So this is the perfect parole scenario, right? This is how all paroled criminals should be managed. But what does Keith do? He continues with his exact same pattern of behavior. He refuses to follow the terms of his parole. He refuses to follow the rules. He leaves the state of Delaware in January, 2021. So this is just weeks 
after he was paroled the second time, and he travels into Philadelphia. This is clear and direct violation of his parole. Keith's mother lived in Philadelphia, and he shows up at her house, which was a surprise to her, but he told her that he was allowed to be there. Let's talk just a little bit about Keith's mother, Christine Gibson, because she was a very accomplished woman. Christine was only 15 years old when she had Keith. The father abandoned Christine and left her to raise Keith on her own. They were very, very poor. They lived in an impoverished area and Christine worked as a social worker. As Keith got older, Christine decided to go back to school. And in 2009, while Keith was in prison, she graduated with a bachelor's degree in social science. Christine knew that her son was troubled. He had zero interest in school. He was almost always in trouble. He was stealing, he was getting into fights. And by the time he was 19, he had been arrested more than 12 times. Why do we let kids get arrested 12 times? Obviously the arrests are doing nothing. We need something else, some more intervention here. Keith had anger issues and an explosive temper. It was very common for him to fly into a rage at home and he and his mother argued frequently. So Keith shows back up at his mother's house and basically moves in, telling her that his parole officer knows he is in Philadelphia, which is a lie. Christine notices that her son's temper is worse than ever. She doesn't want him staying with her and she is afraid of him. Their arguments get worse and worse and then it all ends in tragedy. A call comes into 911 dispatch in Philadelphia. The caller is reporting shots fired. The police arrive at the 4200 block of Ridge Avenue and find Christine Gibson dead on the office floor inside the community center where she worked. Christine had been shot once and although EMTs tried to revive her, they could not. She was only 54 years old. The police went to Christine's home on North Krosky Street, and that's when they discovered that Keith had skipped out on his parole and was staying with his mother in Philadelphia. Keith seemed very upset about the murder of his mother. He was crying and he was angry, and he told police that he knew nothing about why his mother would have been killed. When the police call the Delaware Parole Board, the parole board tells them to bring Keith back in because he has violated his parole and he would need to be extradited back to Delaware to face prosecution. So Keith is taken back to Delaware and then the investigation into Christine's murder begins. Very quickly, the police zone in on Keith as a prime suspect, mainly because Christine had told her friends and family, quote, if anything ever happens to me, it will be Keith that did it. So Keith is held in prison awaiting a hearing for absconding on parole. And that hearing takes place in April of 2021. The judge then ordered Keith to be returned to prison to finish the remainder of his 2008 sentence. That would be an additional six and a half years. Remember, he only did like 12 and a half years plus a little time before his trial before he was let out and he had a 20 year sentence. So Keith's attorney objects and he shows the judge proof that Keith is engaged to a woman who will provide him with a house and with work in Philadelphia. And that if the judge will let Keith go back to Philadelphia, Keith will be gainfully employed and he will have a place to live. So the judge takes this into consideration and two weeks later, she enters her order. She is going to allow Keith to go back to Philadelphia where he will continue to be monitored by parole. But first he has to do 31 days in jail for jumping parole. So Keith does the 31 days and then he leaves Delaware and goes back to Philadelphia. <laughs> this is baffling to me that this judge would allow this. This guy is literally a menace to society. He's killed one man and done time. He's the prime suspect in his mother's murder and this judge lets him off on parole even after he's violated that parole and left the state. Well, if you think that's bad, it's about to get much worse. At the time Keith appeared for his hearing in front of this judge that eventually lets him go back to Philadelphia, no one knew that he had murdered two other people in Germantown while out on parole. On January 28th, so about a week before his mother was murdered, Keith walked in to the Al Medina Trader's store and shot and killed two customers, 50-year-old Eric Flores and 42-year-old Roy Caban. For what? For absolutely no reason. He took a little money from the store. These were just two customers. 
in the store. I don't know where the owner was, but a few minutes after the shooting, a passerby looked in the store window and saw that there were two bodies laying in the store and the passerby called 911. The police were still looking into this murder when Christine was murdered and they hadn't really tied Keith definitively to either yet. So Keith is in Philly for about a week and then he decides to go back to Delaware where he commits a heinous act. On May 15th, Keith walked into this Metro by T-Mobile store in Ellesmere, Delaware, where 28-year-old Leslie Lizette Ruiz Basilio was working alone. Keith walks behind the counter and grabs Leslie by the arm and then the hair, and he drags her into a back room in the store where he basically executes her. He shoots her in the head. This woman is just at work doing her job. In the middle of the day, Keith then steals the keys to Leslie's SUV. He takes some money from the cash drawer and a bunch of cell phones off the display wall, and he gets into Leslie's car and flees the scene. It just doesn't get much more callous than this. It's an absolutely disgusting, cold-blooded murder of a working woman trying to make money to provide for her family. The entire event, the murder and everything, is captured on CCTV. But Keith had worn a balaclava, and so it was difficult to see his face, a ski mask. Word went out of the brutal crime and the entire community was sad and angry. Of two young children who was shot and killed inside a Delaware Metro PCS store. Police say tonight they need the public's help to find the suspect in that surveillance video. Good evening, I'm Jill Holden. Family members tell CBS3 28-year-old Leslie Basilio was the manager at that Metro PCS store in Newcastle County. She was working by herself when she was killed. She now leaves behind a 12-year-old daughter and 6-year-old son. Alicia Roberts is live with reaction from the victim's family and the latest now in the search for that gunman. Alicia. Joe, behind me, the memorial continues to grow outside the Metro PCS where the store manager and mother of two worked. She was known for her kindness, and those that knew her hope that justice will be served as police find her killer. I can't explain the feeling I had at that moment. It was just like somebody grabbed my heart. One day after a gunman shot and killed a Metro PCS store manager and mother of two young children, the family of Leslie Lizette Basilio gathered to remember a woman loved by so many. This is a ceremony we do for her soul so God can guide her through to heaven. Leslie's cousin talked to her around 5 p.m. Saturday, less than 30 minutes before police say this man attempted to rob the store. I was on the phone with her, inviting her over to come to my daughter's birthday party. A neighbor who's watched out for Basilio over the years. I know she's there by herself on Saturdays late. Saw the suspect drive off in her 2008 Cadillac Escalade. He said the store's been robbed three times before, so he walked over to make sure his friend was okay. I looked over and the cash drawer was open, so I, this is not good. He called police from the store. When they arrived, medics tried to revive Bastilio, but it was too late. Outside, family, friends, and customers decorated the storefront with flowers and balloons for the woman whose kindness was felt by all who knew her. Always help with any problem that I had with my Metro phone. She was a kind soul. She, you would ask her for any favor, and she would not hesitate to reply yes. Yeah, the world loves a good person and a good mom. Hopeful now to bring her and her family justice. I just hope and pray that they find a the person that they that have done this. Because it's senseless. Nothing can bring her back, but I just hope she's in heaven. After killing Leslie, Keith leaves Delaware and goes back to Philadelphia. His mother's house was now in the hands of the bank, and so he had nowhere to go. So he lived on the streets there in Philly. On June 5th, early in the morning, around 5 a.m., Keith kind of hid himself in an area next to a Dunkin' Donuts store with the intention of robbing it. 41-year-old Christine Lugo was going to be at the store alone. Her co-worker had called in and said they weren't coming in, so she was going to be there alone that morning. Don't get me started on people working alone, especially at odd hours. I literally think it should be illegal, but that's a conversation for another day. Keith walks to the Dunkin' Donuts and waits in the parking lot for someone to show up and open the store. Christine arrives, and as she is using her key to get into the store, Keith runs up to her and pushes her aside. Then he shoves a 357 revolver in her face. 
he has Christine open the cash drawer and she gives him the whole $300 inside. He had a whole $300. Then Keith raises his gun and shoots this woman in the head for absolutely no reason. She did exactly as he asked and still he shot her. And again, this entire event is caught on surveillance video. But this time, Keith does not have his face covered. The police get the surveillance video and start showing the man on the tape around the area. Very soon, they find people who know exactly who the man is. It's Keith Gibson. Then the police in Philly get a call from the Delaware police who tell them, hey, this guy is linked to killings in our area as well. So the police start to piece together not only the Metro T-Mobile robbery and murder, but the Dunkin' Donuts murder, the murders at the trader store, and the murder of Christine Gibson, Keith's mother. Developing right now, Philadelphia police say they know who killed the manager of a Lehigh Avenue Dunkin' Donuts early Saturday morning. He's currently being held in Delaware, and they say he could be tied to other murders. Our Jeff Cole is live at the Roundhouse with what police are saying about this. Jeff. Yeah, fast-moving events here. Keith Gibson, 39 years old. Police say he is the killer of Christine Lugo, the manager of a Dunkin' Donuts on Lehigh Avenue, who was followed into the store early Saturday morning and shot in the head. But Gibson, as you say, being held in Delaware, may be linked to a series of other killings, including that of his mother. A sign mourning the loss of Christine Lugo rests in the window of the Lehigh Ave Dunkin' Donuts where the 41-year-old lost her life when shot in the head by a robber early Saturday morning. Police now say 39-year-old Keith Gibson, caught on a security camera, is the killer. We believe Mr. Gibson is the perpetrator at the um, Lehigh Avenue murder of Ms. Lugo. I spoke to the district attorney within the hour. Uh, they are in the process of approving a warrant for us. Investigators say they tied Gibson to the murder after police from Ellesmere, Delaware, alerted them to a similar killing. An employee of a cell phone store, Leslie Basilio, was shot in the head last month, may now be linked to a series of killings, including the murder of his mother at her job in a Ridge Ave, Philadelphia counseling center in February. We're expecting there could very well be charges in that case sometime today. And there's more. Investigators are taking another look at the killing of two men shot in the head in a business along the 3600 block of Germantown Ave earlier this year. Police plan to bring Gibson here from Delaware where he's being held and say they did speak to him after his mother's killing. We did have him. At that point, we could not link him to the murder and he was sent back to Delaware uh, in custody and did get out of custody again sometime in March. Police say there's painstaking work still to do in the many cases, while Christine Lugo's customers are outraged. He's a coward. He's an absolute coward. Uh, I heard that possibly he had done some other things as well. You know, maybe he's sick, but I wish that they had, had security here. Now, police say that Gibson could be linked to as many as four killings. Now, he has spent time in prison before a Cadillac Escalade taken from the Ellesmere, Delaware site of that killing was found just a few blocks from the killing on at Dunkin' Donuts on Lehigh Ave, just a few blocks away, the same vehicle. Live here at the round. As the police begin to piece all of this information together, Keith continues to cause murder and mayhem. The day after he murdered Christine Lugo in the Dunkin' Donuts store, he goes back to Wilmington, Delaware. He has been watching this local drug dealer named Ronald Wright, who was 42 years old. Keith knows that Ronald always has cash on him. So Keith walks up to Ronald and just murders him in the middle of the street before taking all of the cash he has on him. Keith then turns his gun on Ronald's friend, a man named Belal Almansori. Keith fires his gun at Belal and shoots him in the head, but it doesn't kill this man. Bilal lays on the ground and pretends that he is dead, and that's what saved his life. While the police hunt for Keith, he robs three more people in Wilmington, but thankfully, for some reason, does not shoot any of those people. They all get away with their lives, and I cannot imagine how they must have felt about that. Can you imagine finding out that this man, who has just been walking into businesses and indiscriminately murdering people in cold blood, has robbed you and let you live? I mean... Go buy a lottery ticket for sure. On June 8th, 2021, Keith Gibson walks into this Rite Aid and pulls a gun on the clerk. 
The clerk behind the counter is very nervous, but as they load the cash from the register into the bag for Keith, they manage to slip a GPS device in between the stacks of cash. So Keith takes off with the money, not knowing that he is being tracked. Now, that's a brave move by the clerk, and it's also very fortunate that the clerk wasn't killed because, as we've seen, Keith has no issue with just shooting people for no reason. The police track the GPS device, and it takes them right to Keith Gibson. They draw their weapons and approach Keith Gibson, and fortunately, he gives up without a fight. When Keith is arrested, he is wearing body armor. Where does a homeless guy get body armor? <laughs> I'm so confused. Keith is also carrying a revolver. The police frisk him. They find drugs, ammo, a mask, stolen money, and gloves. Now, this made sense because in all of the surveillance videos of each crime, the killer is wearing gloves. It's odd that he would bother to put on gloves but not worry about covering his face, right? Kind of tells me that this is someone who is not in their right mind, someone who is not playing with a full deck. After his arrest, Keith leads the police to his hidden cache of loot. There is cash from the robberies, and there is also a 357 revolver that the police tie through ballistics to all six murders and the various robberies that have been committed. Keith is taken into custody, and the two communities breathe a sigh of relief, knowing that this monster is finally off the streets. Police have arrested a man they are calling a serial killer. He's accused in the murder of a North Philadelphia Duncan store manager and the manager of a Delaware cell phone store. Alicia Roberts spoke with family and friends of the victims, and she is live outside police headquarters with new information just in from detectives in Delaware. Alicia. Yes, that's right, Jess. Within the last hour, Wilmington police confirmed Keith uh, Gibson was taken into custody this morning around 8.20 a.m. in connection with an armed robbery in Delaware. He was wearing a bulletproof vest and carrying a knife and a loaded gun. Tonight, he is in police custody there, charged with first-degree murder, uh, um, first-degree robbery, that is. But news of his arrest didn't come as a surprise to friends and family of the victims at the Dunkin' Donut and the Metro. PCS. Now the prosecutors had some decisions to make. This man has killed people in two states, so which case is strongest? Which case has the most damning evidence? Who is going to try this guy first? It's ultimately decided that Keith would first stand trial in Delaware for the murders of Leslie and Ronald, and then after that he would be extradited to Pennsylvania. His Delaware trial started in October of 2023. The surveillance footage was, of course, going to be the biggest part of the evidence against Keith. The prosecution also had forensic evidence that linked his gun to the crime scenes. Then the public found out that the police had retrieved clothing and other stolen evidence that was found in Keith's fiance's house where Keith stayed. So those items also tied him to the murders. This fiance actually took the stand against Keith and testified against him saying that without a doubt that was him in the surveillance video at the T-Mobile Metro store and the Dunkin' Donuts. Keith's attorney tried to say that because there were no fingerprints at the scenes, it couldn't have been Keith. Look, <laughs> these defense attorneys have to come up with something when your guy is literally just standing there barefaced on camera committing robbery. I mean, what are you gonna do, you know? The prosecutors also had evidence about Leslie's SUV, the Black Escalade, that was later found abandoned near Keith's house in Philadelphia. Then the prosecutors bring in Bilal, remember the friend of Ronald Wright that Keith shot before stealing their drugs. Now, I don't know if Keith found out that this guy wasn't actually dead in the discovery process or not, but can you imagine his face when Bilal walked into the courtroom? He very well may have found out before then. A lot of these public defenders, though, they don't communicate with their clients very well. I like to imagine a moment where Keith sees Bilal walk into the courtroom after thinking he's dead. That just, I don't know, brings a smile to my face. But Bilal obviously testifies about what happened to him. The trial lasted for a few weeks, and then on November 14th, 2023, after deliberating for six hours, the jury found Keith Gibson guilty on all of the charges put to him. Guilty for the murders, the robberies, the weapons charges, the car theft, guilty of it all. The judge sentenced Keith to two life terms without the possibility of parole. Keith will now be extradited to Philadelphia where he will stand trial for the remaining murders. That hasn't happened yet, but I will bring you a little update perhaps in the form of a short when it does. Keith Gibson is truly a monster. He's a menace. 
I think it's important that we talk about these kinds of killers. This was a man that everyone knew was dangerous. He'd been arrested over and over and nothing was done to keep the public safe from him. Now, kids are growing up without their mothers. His own mother is dead and men are dead just because they were shopping in the wrong store at the wrong time or standing on the wrong street corner at the wrong time. I've noticed the more I talk about these crimes, the less compassion I have for these types of criminals. I don't know how I feel about that. I really don't. I happened to watch one of my older episodes the other day and there is a marked difference in my level of compassion for the killers from years ago when I started this channel until now. And that worries me a little bit. I don't want to become a person who doesn't have compassion for people who do terrible things, you know, maybe grow up in bad circumstances. But I am also increasingly frustrated and angry at the failures that I see every day. The failures of people to stand up and speak up, the failures of the justice system, the failures of parents, the failures of churches and schools. This kind of work gets to people. I actually know several big creators that have had to take a break and I completely understand why. I want to be a compassionate person, but what I know is that my compassion will always fall on the side of the victim, no matter who they are or how they choose to live their life. No one deserves to lose their life at the hands of a killer. So while this work may have me questioning some things about myself, the one thing I know for sure is that I care more about the victims than I do about the killers. And for now, that will have to be enough. Thank you for joining me today on Dark Hearts with Stacey Lee. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and you can join my Patreon if you want to support me. We are also in the midst of a fundraiser. There is a video on my playlist. This is the thumbnail. Go and find that, and it tells you all about the fundraiser. We are raising money in hopes of solving a cold case. Thank you so much for your continued support, my friends. Stay safe and be kind to each other, and I will see you next time on Dark Hearts with Stacey Lee. Bye.